So what is this? It's something for the exoskeleton, finally, I know. Um, basically, I contacted a um, motorcycle helmet company that makes a Iron Man styled motorcycle helmet. Take a look. And I asked them if I could have one in exchange for a review and to use it in my projects. And they said yes. So they're shipping that to me uh, right now and I should have it in a few weeks. Now what I have right here is the beginning of my uh, Predator Vision attachment for the exoskeleton. So what we have right here, this is actually a uh, thermal imaging sensor and this is a standard GoPro. So the problem is thermal imaging sensors are super expensive and they're typically really low resolution. So what I've done is I've taken this and I'll be overlaying the thermal data on top of the HD GoPro data. And then the goal will be to have some kind of heads up display in the helmet that can then um, basically give me predator vision. I might not even need the GoPro because if I can just overlay the thermal data over like a clear screen, that might work too. So enough talking about it, let's see what I can do. All right, let's try this again. Uh, GoPro keeps giving me problems. Um, I guess maybe my memory card isn't actually a genuine class 10. Not too sure, but uh, here we go. So, as you can see, I'm recording with the GoPro and the thermal imaging camera. And you can see that the uh, hot spots in the garage right now are the uh, light fixtures. And that's because the lights are emitting a lot of infrared heat. But even if we turn off the lights, they're still going to emit that infrared radiation. So let's turn off the lights now. And the GoPro footage is going to go dark. But thanks to the thermal unit, we can still see what's going on. So I'm going to head on up there and let's see if it can detect me. So you may have noticed the thermal image doesn't quite line up perfectly with the uh, GoPro footage. And there's a few problems with that. The thermal image is much lower frame rate, so it's a bit jerky. I'm working on some post-processing techniques to help reduce the impact that you see that with. And then the other problem is uh, the two camera sensors aren't perfectly aligned yet. So um, especially when you go from something close up to something far away, uh, if the lenses aren't perfectly parallel to each other, then uh, the images aren't going to overlay properly. So those are things I'm going to be working on for the uh, next prototype version of this. Meow. Alright, so this is a different filter option. It's basically the same thing, it just uses different colors to detect heat, but it looks really cool. So let's actually walk around a bit and see what we can see. What we can see. There's all the lights in the ceiling. So there's something warm back here. What is that? So that's actually my, my stereo, which was just on before, so it's producing a bit of heat. Now glass actually reflects infrared heat. So you're actually seeing the heat reflected off of my body in the glass. Go 
There's still a bit of daylight outside. Now, isn't that interesting? That's the parking lot. So as you can see, the parking lot's actually pretty warm. It's because concrete and asphalt absorb a lot of heat during the day compared to the grass, which is nice and cool. And then even the trees, compared to the atmosphere, are also putting off a bit of infrared heat. And there's the parking lot again. The floor is lava. This is pretty cool, watch this. <laughs> is that not awesome? So you know in Predator, when they track the footsteps? Yeah, I can do that. It's still warm, look at that. It's like finger painting with heat. Yeah, it didn't work. And look, you can see the foundation of the garage is really warm, but the metal siding is not. So, that's it for now. Um, I'm going to work on reducing the form factor of this, and once I get that helmet, integrating it into the helmet. It's going to be pretty awesome.